you go to a dentist to have a, a cleaning and you, you come out of his office saying, I might die. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear that. I, no, I didn't, I never expected that. That was very unique. This isn't just a business, you know, it's, it's us taking care of people and helping people be healthier. Dr. Henley had gotten a new x-ray machine, the kind that goes around and you stand in it. So he x-rayed me and after he printed the results, he called me in there and showed me what looked to him to be a blockage in my carotid artery on one side. Well, we were reviewing Mr. Downey's x-ray and it was obvious that there was a blockage on the right hand side. So I go to the hospital and have the surgery and the doctor determined that I had a 90% blockage and he had to clean it out. And he told me that I was a very fortunate man. The consistency of the blockage was such that if just a piece had broken off, it could have caused a massive stroke. I was really upset. And I was, afraid, I was afraid you were be, gonna be dead. For mm -hmm. most patients that have a carotid artery blockage are gonna be completely unaware that they have it. You know, it's not that you feel something or you're out of breath or there's some sort of symptom associated with it. For most patients, they're gonna come in and be like, I had no idea that, that I feel fine. You know, it could have killed me or, or, you know, paralyzed one side of my body or it, no telling what could have happened. So, in short, Dr. Henley probably saved my life by finding, you know, a dentist, finding a, a blockage in your carotid artery. I think that's kind of unusual. It's one of the arteries that it supplies blood to your brain, and an 86% blockage is really a staggering number that at 14%, you're still receiving enough blood to oxygenate your brain. I don't believe in coincidences. I, I firmly believe that that was God's way of taking care of Chuck. Um, oh, there's no doubt about uh, that. We should be, as clinicians, as dentists, looking at everything, not just teeth and not just your mouth. You know, we're kind of looking at everything. Occasionally we'll catch problems with medications or conflicts or, you know, just little things here and there that an observant clinician is going to find that will have a huge impact on someone's overall well-being. Over the years, I've introduced uh, three uh, friends to my dentist and they, they've all start, go, started to go there and have been going there for years. You know, so, I mean, they like him too. There must be, you know, gotta be something there for that many people to, to like a dentist. <laughs> That's right.